Today I want to talk about the float test. This is a really helpful test for processing large amounts of seeds. It's best for acorns, hickories, and other larger nuts. <clears throat> and it's really simple to perform. All you're doing is filling up a container with water and dumping your seeds into the water. And you'll see some will float like this and some will sink. And the idea behind the test is we do not want the floaters. Any of those that are floating, um, we won't plant and the sinkers we will store. And I'll talk a little bit more about some of the reasons for that. So I took two seeds. This one sank, this one floated and busted them open with a hammer. And you can pretty quickly see the difference. This is the floater and you can see the actual seed inside the shell is all dried and shriveled up. Not sure what happened to it, but this is not a seed we would want to plant. And because it floats, we can easily tell and toss that seed. This is a sinker. You can see the nice nut meat in there. This is a seed we would want to plant. And so again, without having to crack open these nuts, by simply doing the float test, you can sort the bad ones from the good ones. So the float test is really helpful for processing lots of seeds, but it's not 100% accurate. Everything with seeds is a little more complicated than it seems, or there's always little wrinkles to every rule. So when you do your flow test, it's important to really inspect the seed and see what's happening. Open some of the ones that sink, open some of the ones that float, see if you can identify what looks like a good seed versus what looks like a bad seed. And as you practice, you'll get better at that. Beech is another seed that's great to use the flow test on. And I want to show you beech because it can be helpful for learning how to visually inspect the seeds and making decisions about whether you want to collect these or not when you're out in the field. So this seed here sank. And you can see once I zoom or focus that it is full. There's nice nut meat in there. And this will grow into a nice, beautiful beech tree. Um, well, not this one anymore, but it would have. <clears throat> this one, on the other hand, is empty. This one floated, and this one will not grow into a tree. You can see there's nothing in there. It's all shriveled up. So the flow tests can quickly separate the good seeds from the not good ones. And now here are seeds that I haven't cut open, but you can see this one is is nice and plump. Um, it feels solid when I squeeze it. Um, it's nice and rounded and it also sank. So I'm guessing this will be a good seed. Sometimes when I'm out collecting, I'll just bite into this with my canine and you can pretty quickly see if there's a, if there's a viable, if this is a viable seed or not. Whereas this one on the other hand, is shriveled, let me just focus, it's smaller. Again, the difference is subtle. I'm not sure how well it's coming out on camera, but with experience, you'll be able to tell. Um, when you squeeze it, it feels a little mm, flimsier. It feels a little lighter, and this one did float. But what I wanna show you these is if you're out in the field collecting and the first 10 nuts you collect look like this, they look no good. You might wanna stop collecting from that tree. Um, so the visual test can really help you as you're collecting seeds. And then you can bring them home and use the float test to um, validate what you've been seeing. And then also cut some open to further validate it. And eventually you'll get pretty good at learning each specific seed. The float test won't work for every species. There are some oak species where the seed will float even when it is good. I'm sure there are others too. And sometimes when the seed is really small, it can be difficult to do the float test for. But so again, it's important to know your species and feel free to reach out to us if you want more information on a seed you are growing. The float test is also not 100% 
depending on the species and depending on um, how that species has been stored. I recently float tested a lot of pecans and they all floated, but when I cracked them open, the nut looked good and I'm gonna plant them out and I think they'll do pretty well. I read a report recently that I thought was interesting. They were testing the viability of the float test on a batch of northern red oak acorns. And what they found was that if the seed was bad, there was a high chance that it floated. Not too many of the bad seeds sank. <clears throat> um, but if the seed was good, many of them sank. So many of the, many of the ones that sank were good. But out of the floaters, there were a lot that were bad, but there, there were also a lot that were good. So I guess the takeaway from this, and, um, and it's important to know that this was just one batch of northern red oaks. Your batch could be very different. A different species could be very different. This is something that has not been highly studied. We'd like to look into it a lot more. But the takeaway is that, you know, if you just have a small batch of seeds and you really want to make sure those are growing for you or you, or, you know, you don't want to throw away any good seeds, you might not want to use the float test um, because if your batch of seeds look like their batch, um, you could be throwing away a lot of good seeds that floated. So again, this is something that's super useful if you have a ton of seeds and need to process them. Um, it's very useful to just do and see what the results are and visually inspect them. But depending on the seed and species, don't always follow the float test and just keep learning, um, keep experimenting with new seeds and feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions.